Hello guys, Amanda here and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a little different. You are going to see an illustration that I made of Keller the Grindelwald in the background. But today, I don't want to talk about what everyone's been talking about. I don't want to talk about Johnny Depp because I think enough has been said about Johnny Depp. If I must say it, I do not agree with what Warner Brothers did of firing him from the Fantastic Beasts trilogy because I do agree with most people that one of the few interesting things about this trilogy or quintology or whatever it was going to be was indeed the story of Gellert Grindelwald. I was kind of hoping that we would dwell into his relationship, his love relationship with Dumbledore to see if J.K. Rowling is actually as you know, open-minded that she claims to be with his gay character that was supposedly always gay, but that, that's a different discussion that I'm not going to get into right now. So yeah, I don't agree with what they did to Johnny Depp. I'm glad that at least they had decency to pay him his entire wedge and, you know, 10 million dollars for a movie that he's not going to make because he's going to need them and it's going to take a while for him to get back on his feet, so I hope he does great. And I'm really sorry that this franchise lost Johnny Depp. A lot of people are talking about boycotting the movies because of this. I don't know what to think about it. I think it's stupid to try and boycott something. Because there's always someone who's going to watch it. So, yeah. Now, I have very strong opinions about Fantastic Beasts. I really like the first movie because I'm a Hufflepuff. And it's really nice to see not only a Hufflepuff lead, but also a guy that is so, you know, not in the norm of what a normal hero would be. There are very interesting essays, I would leave some links in the description, about how Newt is, you know, he's a very unusual lead. He doesn't really fit into what we normally would expect of a male hero. So the first movie I do like, the second movie was a mess, um, I mean it's called The Crimes of Grindelwald, but I don't think there is any crime committed by Grindelwald in that movie, I think he only gives orders and other people do the things, or he's never showed on screen doing those things. There is this point where he's giving a speech about stopping World War II, which is kind of hard to think of someone as a villain when he wants to stop, you know, the Holocaust, but <laughs> yeah, what do I know? But what I want to talk about today is not Johnny Depp and this entire drama, because everyone has talked about that. I want to talk about who is replacing Johnny Depp, and that is Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen. Now, as a Mads Mikkelsen fan, I was really worried that he was going to get a lot of hate for taking this role, and I had a lot of mixed feelings coming into, you know, accepting that he was going to be the new Grindelwald. First of all, I had a hard time just accepting that he was going to be a part of the, you know, Harry Potter cinematic universe. A part of me was happy because I've always been a huge Harry Potter fan, so seeing my favorite actor being a part of this world that I love so much and that I'm so invested in is really special. But at the same time, it's a bittersweet feeling, not only because of what happened to Johnny Depp and the fact that it has tainted this character so much, but also because I don't necessarily agree with the things J.K. Rowling has said, you know, about trans people and stuff like that, or the way she thinks that making Dumbledore gay after publishing the book and never actually putting it in the meat of the book is enough representation. I, I don't agree with that in a lot of things. And I have friends who are really, really heartbroken that Maz Mikkelsen is going to work for someone who shows such hate. And I have a trans friend who's especially hurt about the fact that this woman has denied her existence and yet Maz Mikkelsen is going to work for her. It really breaks her heart. And I have to say, I understand where she's coming from and that's why it's bittersweet for me to see him taking this role. I'm happy that he did, because it's a great role and he's going to have fun with it, I just know that. But coming back to what I was saying, I was kind of expecting a lot of people to throw hate at Matt, like, oh, who's that guy, you know, screw him, I don't want him as Green the Wall. And I actually haven't seen any of that, which I'm really, really pleased about. I've seen a lot of, you know, he's not going to be my Green the Wall, but in the sense that Johnny Depp was already Green the Wall, and we don't want anyone else, or anyone gonna watch this movie, because not because of this actor, but because Johnny Depp's not in it. 
But what I wanted to do in this video was actually talk about the reasons why I think Mas Mikkelsen is going to be a great killer to Grindelwald. So I think I should stop talking and messing around and actually get into the middle of it because it's been 6 minutes and I'm just here babbling, so yeah. I decided to make, a, to make a list. This is not a list in any particular order, just how things are coming into my mind about why I think Mas Mikkelsen is going to be an amazing killer at Grindelwald. Number 1. Mas Mikkelsen is Danish. And as we all know, Gellert Windewald was Bulgarian. Mas Mikkelsen does have that European man look that I think would have been more appropriate for Grindelwald and Johnny Depp's. I mean, you would look at Mas Mikkelsen and think, oh yeah, that guy totally started in Durmstrang. He has that cultural and physical, you know, alignment to the character that I like. Two, Mas Mikkelsen has a lot, and I mean a lot, of experience playing bad guys. This is going to come back at some point, but the reality is that Mas Mikkelsen has a very evil face. Now, I happen to think that he is a remarkably beautiful man, but he does have kind of an evil face, and it's easy to cast him into evil characters. So he has a lot of characters that are either ambiguous into being evil, or that are just the villains of the movie. And that brings me to point number three. Mas Mikkelsen is not a newbie when it comes to playing characters in you know, big blockbuster cinematic universes. Mas Mikkelsen has been part of the Star Wars universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the James Bond Cinematic Universe. So he knows how to deal with characters that hold this much responsibility in them. He knows how to get in and become part of the worlds that he's pushed into as an actor. So. For Star Wars, he did this very small part as the father of the main character in Star Wars Rogue One. And I think he did, a, he did a good job for what he was given. He's not in the movie for a long time, but he's there and he feels like part of this world. He's actually the engineer who made the Death Star, so it's a complicated character because he's not a bad person, but he's forced to do bad things. And Mas Mikkelsen is an incredible actor, but we'll come back to that. Um, talking about Marvel, he did the role of Kaecilius, which is the antagonist in the movie Doctor Strange. It's, you know, a replaceable character in the sense that all of those first movie villains never actually come back, except maybe for Loki. But he does a great job, he looks menacing, he looks creepy, he looks really magical, and he really fits into the whole Doctor Strange world that was built for him. And I think he had a lot of fun doing that role, which is also very refreshing to see. And then we have James Bond, and in James Bond he plays the main antagonist in Casino Royale, uh, which is Le Chiffre, and he is evil as... F he is a menace for James Bond, which is Daniel Craig's James Bond. I'm not sure, correct me, but I think this was Daniel Craig's first movie as James Bond. And he looks menacing, he looks powerful, and he looks like he's enjoying torturing Daniel Craig, so I think that's really important. The next number on my list, I think it's number four, is that Mas Mikkelsen has done it before, so he knows how to get into the shoes of a character that is already iconic in the performance that was given before, and makes it his own. And I think this is really important when it comes to Grindelwald, because a lot of people are saying, no, it's Johnny Depp's performance that makes Grindelwald. So he's not going to be able to be a good Grindelwald because he's not Johnny Depp. Now, of course he's not Johnny Depp, and one of the first things that Mas Mikkelsen has said about this role is that he's not Johnny Depp, and that he's going to make this character his own. And if you're doubting his skills to build a character from scratch, even when he has, you know, influences on how the character was played before, all you have to do is look back to his work on Hannibal, because I think that's some of his best work. Now, Hannibal Lecter is a particularly hard character to cast, because in Silence of the Lambs, you get an actor like Sir Anthony Hopkins, who gave an amazing performance. So amazing that it's not only iconic and part of like our culture to this day, but he won an Oscar for only about 15 to 17 minutes on screen. That's how iconic this performance was. And a lot of people, including me, were not convinced that he was going to pull it off when the Hannibal show was announced. Like, how are you going to top 
what Anthony Hopkins did and what he did so incredibly well. And what Matt Mi and what Mads Mikkelsen did is what I think every actor that faces this kind of dilemma should do, which is not to try and be better, but to be different. And I think that's the same approach he's going to take on Grindelwald, because Mads Mikkelsen's Hannibal is completely different to Anthony Hopkins. No matter if it's the same character with the same characteristics, it feels different. He sat down and he reflected about why Hannibal does the things he does. Why is he so evil? Why does he make the decisions he makes? And he gave the character this brand new, you know, way of thinking and existing that has made many people fall in love with this character and with his performance. He is, and I repeat, an incredible actor. He has been in amazing movies. He has been nominated to awards. He has won, you know, he has the best actor award from the Festival of Cannes. Because he is a very capable performer. That is the truth. And he is not going to be a better Grindelwald than Johnny Depp. He is going to be a different one. And I personally think it has the potential to be even better. Not because Johnny Depp is bad, but because I think Mads Mikkelsen is actually a better match for him. And maybe having a different actor, and an actor that is more willing to be menacing and mean, because I honestly cannot see Johnny Depp as menacing or mean or cool. I think the only time I've ever seen him as a threat was in um, Sweeney Todd, he's very good in that movie. But he's not exactly the kind of person you put in a role to be an antagonistic figure, unlike Mads Mikkelsen. So I think they could have a lot more fun by making Mad Ac Mass actually be mean and cruel and the kind of dark wizard that we are expecting to see from Grindelwald because honestly so far he doesn't seem like such a bad guy. You know, he, he has good arguments which one could say is evil on its own because he's manipulating people but manipulating people is not the worst thing you can do as an, you know, all-powerful egomaniac wizard. So I think they could have a lot more fun with Mass because just from the way he looks, I mean, if you've seen him in Death Stranding, just him standing there in the dark, it's it's creepy as hell and it's amazing. Or just watching him look at people as Hannibal, just analyze them, it's creepy because you know they are going to die. And he has the power to do that with just one look, that's just how threatening he looks when he wants to because he's actually a sweetheart of a man. The last point I think I would make, the last point I think people could make if they were really interested in it is, well, I don't think he's going to have good chemistry with Dumbledore, you know, with Jude Law. So if they do want to explore their romance, I don't think Miss Mikkelsen can do it. And again, I must refer to Hannibal to prove you wrong, because if you've seen Hannibal, and if you haven't, you totally should. Um, Miss Mikkelsen shares, especially in seasons two and three, he shares this very, very intense and very unhealthy romance with co-star Hugh Dancy, who plays Will Graham. And they have a lot of chemistry. You don't need the characters to tell you that Hannibal is in love with Will for you to realize how deeply he cares for him. All he needs to do is look at him, and you know that that's the look of love. Eventually, it is spelled for you, you know, it's Hannibal in love with me, yes. And you can feel that, you can feel the sparks in the air when they are together. And I think that comes not only from them being good friends, but also from the fact that they are both very, very competent actors. And it's not the first time that Mads Mikkelsen has played a bisexual character, because I do believe Hannibal is bisexual. Um, he has other roles where he has played a character with a similar sexuality, and he manages to sell it. He creates that atmosphere, he creates that tension, that sexual tension. He can be a very sexual being. And I think that would be a very interesting counterpart to Jude Law's very laid-back, kind of safe-looking Dumbledore. I actually think he may manage to get way more, you know, passionate about his performance with Jude Law. I think he would actually make the romance bloom even with just one look, which is something we haven't gotten now, and that could be, and that could be, you know, hidden in the subtext enough for what J.K. Rowling likes to do with his character. So I could sit down here all day and tell you why Mans Mikkelsen is going to be a great in the world. Those are my main points. I am not worried 
for the character. I think the character is going to be revamped and he's, and it's going to be amazing. I am concerned that maybe the movie won't do as well as they are expecting it to do because of all this drama. I'm hoping they won't cancel it because I do want to see Mass Mikkelsen as Green the World. I do want to see Mass Mikkelsen as part of the Harry Potter universe. And I hope that he shines. I hope that he has fun, most of all. I hope that he has fun with the character. I hope he makes it his own. That he brings something to the table that people were not expecting. So that when the people that didn't want to watch this movie look back to it, they are like, Oh, you know what? This is actually good. And this is actually something I can get behind. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, Mas Mikkelsen doesn't need for this movie to sell great. I mean, he does mostly you know art cinema so he's not like a blockbuster breaking actor but i do hope that this will open other doors for him so anyway guys that's all i have to say for today i had a lot of fun talking to you i'm happy to be back i will address why i was gone for so long at some point it's been 2020 was a really really bad year for me not only because of covid but because I was actually extremely sick and to this day I'm still recovering from what that sickness brought into my life so I will talk about it whenever I'm ready you will hear from it and I'm hoping you will stick around if you like this video please comment share and hit the subscribe button to see more and I'll see you later bye guys <laughs>